So every single morning I wake up, every day of my life, I have to check my blood sugars. And I'll use a very simple blood glucose monitor to check that. So this gives me an idea of my fasting blood glucose. I haven't eaten in the last seven to eight hours while I've been sleeping. And this measurement will tell me how my blood sugars have responded over the course of the night. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on my medications, on my insulin, and on my management protocols the whole way throughout the course of these video blogs. But for today, let's just focus on my fasting blood glucose. So realistically in the morning, we really want blood glucose to be relatively low because we haven't eaten any food. So the normal readings in the UK are between around about four to sort of 6.4 millimoles per liter. So let's check what mine is at the moment. Now, I, every single time I do it, I like to do like a little bit of a bet to see what it is. So at the moment, based on how I feel, I'd say we're probably sitting around about six or seven, okay? So sometimes I can be fairly spot on with this. In fact, most of the time I am, but there's the odd time that I'm not. So as you see, I have to prick my finger and I'll use like a little lancet device to do that. And then I put the blood onto the strip. And as you can see, there'll be a countdown timer. Let's see what it comes up with. 14.2, we're a little bit high. So as you can see, sometimes I can feel normal but my blood glucose isn't. So that's double the blood glucose level of what it should be. And with this, this is called hyperglycemia. There's a ton of changes that go on within the body. And bearing in mind, I went to bed last night with a blood glucose of six. It's obviously shot up in the middle of the night. Now there's various hormones that we secrete in the middle of the night, uh, growth hormone being one of them, and also we produce more cortisol in the morning, and these are counter regulatory hormones that increase blood glucose. So they stimulate the release of glucose from the liver. So what I learned from this is that last night I haven't taken enough what we call bolus insulin to accommodate the period where I'm fasting. That's a slow background insulin that controls the release of glucose from the liver. I didn't have anything to eat last night, so it can pretty much be rest assured that uh, this is due to hormonal uh, actions in the middle of the night. Now, this may have only occurred at six o'clock in the morning. It's now just after nine. So this may only be temporary. So now I'll need to administer a corrective dose of insulin to bring this down. And this is actually quite rare for me. So you guys are getting to see firsthand uh, what it's like to have complications and how to correct it. So what I'll do is I will correct with this. This is insulin Nova Rapid. Okay, and this is a fast acting form of insulin that will peak pretty fast in the bloodstream. There are various different forms of insulin. Um, some are faster acting than others, some are slower, but this is one of the fastest. So I'll administer this now. I'll probably take around about 10 or 11 units to correct that. Now, if I'm going to eat breakfast, if I'm going to take in some food, I'm also going to have to accommodate some extra uh, insulin whether or not that meal contains some carbohydrate or protein. So carbohydrate stimulates blood glucose and protein also does to a degree as well. Fat, not so much. So I'm gonna get on with this, take this, and uh, as I say, you guys can watch me take it if you want, but I'm gonna take around about 12 units to correct that. And I can take it in intramuscular or I can take it in adipose tissue. Don't know if you can see that. So. I have to treat that up and if I leave that unmanaged, a host of things go on. Blood sugar will climb further and further. In the lack of insulin, the liver continues to pump things out. So my body's in quite a stress state right now. So although I don't feel it, um, which is actually strange because sometimes normally when I go high, I'm very, very sensitive to it. So again, it's important to check if you are diabetic, sometimes you can let things go and just go by the feeling of it, but it's always good to check. And a little tip, 
Sometimes when people check their blood glucose, if they've been eating, say, for example, a carbohydrate-based food, and they've been dipping their hand in and out of, say, a packet of crisps or something like that, or a bag of Haribo, or they've been handling bread or something like that, the residue of carbohydrate, the residues of glucose can remain on the skin. So whenever I test my blood glucose, the glucose sample picks up the glucose residues on the skin and actually gives a false glucose reading. And what happens is many diabetics will treat accordingly to what they've measured without second testing, therefore administering too much uh, insulin and potentially giving themselves a hypoglycemia, which is the opposite of what you just saw, low blood sugar. And again, that has its consequences. And I'm gonna go in and talk about all these uh, different diabetes related conditions because I know there's a good few hundred diabetics uh, listening to this that follow me. So uh, guys, you can all relate to this. And for those of you that don't, well, this is something that I have to do every single day. Um, it's automatic now, but, um, as I say, I get on with it, and this is actually quite rare, so you guys are getting to see it firsthand. So I'm going to get on with my breakfast this morning. I'm going to give you an insight into how to make the perfect cup of coffee. I'm a massive coffee snob, for those of you that don't already know. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I love the taste of it. I, I go into it a little bit in depth and uh, have various contraptions that I use to uh, brew up the perfect storm each morning. So I'm going to give you guys an insight into that. 